You have never disappointed us. And whenever we have mentioned a need, you have immediately responded. Yes, tonight I could go on and on and simply thank you for all that you have helped us do. On the home front in Aleppo, you have helped us continue operating our schools under very trying circumstances. You have certainly seen pictures of Aleppo when it comes to destruction and repair. The same goes for Kessa. The last years have seen a real sad onslaught on everything called Armenian, starting with the Memorial Church in Derzor and church after church in both Kessa and Aleppo. You have been there in your hearts and thoughts and I cannot see that I can tell you much today that you don't already know. You are so faithful. May God honor you and bless you, wonderful friends. When searching through my mind tonight, I am unsure where to start. Should I begin by telling you that the schools are up and running for the sixth year in this long, long war? Their principal, as well as many of teaching staff, are still there. Quite impressive. The teachers are all sensitive to the needs of the students. At times, they simply stop the teaching, realizing that there has been so much going on in the minds of their students, that there is a time to deal with the trauma created by a situation that nobody should have to go through. Death and violence have touched these children so many times, but we are all ready to keep going in order to provide the very best foundation, both educationally and spiritually, for the coming generation. We continue with the monthly bonus for the school employees. If they were to live off their salaries, they simply wouldn't survive. I'm sure you know that one US dollar is now 530 Syrian liras, and it was 48 Syrian liras. When the fighting broke out five years ago, the economic hardship has hit everybody, and in particular the children, who need nutritious food and good clothing, and both many times out of reach for the normal Armenian family. We do our best through you all by supplying people with food packets and other vital items like soap, toothpaste, etc. And as the winter is coming up and it's already cold in Aleppo, we are helping people with heating oil, as you cannot possibly survive in Aleppo winter without a good heating in your house. We've been through many more sieges since we last met and they have made us all older. It's difficult to survive without electricity and water. Yes, the world press has been talking about the siege in Aleppo and by that they mean the eastern parts of Aleppo. But the sieges that we have been through on the other side of Aleppo year after year have not been mentioned. Yes, we don't really know what the big powers want, but we know what we all want. Peace and an immediate end to all the fighting. We want to go back to where we started. But can we? Since the month of April this year, Aleppo has been going through a demonic war, which has seems to be getting worse and worse. I'm afraid that I will start crying now when thinking what has really happened to us. The other week we went over and visited a family whose two young sons had died when a missile hit their home. When visiting and praying with the family, it was as if there was no love and hope left in the world. It was all so cruel and heartless. I could only think what would happen to me and Shohak if a missile would take the lives of Armani and Arno. 
Yes, I don't want to continue thinking in this direction. It makes everything around us stop. Family, yes, it's something so very special and nothing can replace it. And here we see family after family go through the cruelty that death causes. A friend sent the message to me about another family where three members of the family had just left us all behind. How the whole area had changed because of that one missile, homemade in the most cruel fashion. Yes, there is a funeral after a funeral and sometimes it feels as if we have run out of tears. And at times we hear from people who have just walked down a familiar street when a missile has hit and several people have been hit. Everybody runs to help out. The dead are put in the side and the injured people are getting ready to be picked up by the Red Crescent and then the people who have taken part in the rescue operation simply walk away as if nothing had happened. Seemingly without emotions. Yes, it's scary to know that we can be conditioned to freeze our emotions and live a life not worth living. Where is the tenderness that we used to treasure? Where is the Aleppo people of the past? Living in Aleppo, you get so many opportunities to check your own theology and see how true it really is. Sometimes it's even become difficult to love one's neighbor. How about one's enemy? But it's certainly very important to us to realize that everybody in our beloved Syria is created in the image of God and in need of love and recognition as a human being. That's why we have opened up our dispensary to serve not only Armenians, but people from all backgrounds. This war has made us realize how much we all need one another to live the Christian life, which is worth living. I mentioned earlier trauma. And as the war continues, we know that we will have years ahead us treating trauma victims, and we probably all are. As a pastor, I've experienced how much time I need to help others take the next step in their lives. Trauma leaves people paralyzed and without ability or will to continue living. Yes, if you saw some of the people that we meet just about daily, you would start wondering whether anything could be done to ease the problem. It's enough with the economic struggle. But how about the fear? Which is so real that you can almost touch it from time to time. It's paralyzing and people need to battle with fear every hour of their lives. This is something totally new for most people and they aren't prepared. Yes, prayer does help, but sometimes it's a matter of putting our hands in their hands and lead them on. It's to lend a shoulder for a person to cry on. It's all very practical and maybe this makes us closer as human beings and we pray that these struggles will make us stronger in our faith and more loving and more daring and more able to see Jesus walk through the ruins of Aleppo and giving hope. During these years, we have experienced how some very simple people have becoming little Jesuses in our society. They are there for others. They bring other people's needs to us. Although we later find out that their own needs are greater than the ones that they want to help. I am thinking of Abu Rami, who is not an Armenian, but who has given his whole life 
to helping others, especially after having lost his job. There isn't a day that he does not visit a family with great needs. He and his wife keep on smiling and blessing people in the midst of daily struggles. And they see their mentally challenged son as a miracle of God. I ask, how is this possible? And then I see Jesus standing there instead of Aburami, and I know that Jesus is living through him every minute of the day. Yes, there are others who have lost almost everything. Everything. And they still smile and thank God for what they get on a daily basis although it's far from enough. I see these people and I know that there is a loving God who can love others through us. This is Aleppo of today. How about tomorrow? Are we going back to the time when our Bethel Church, Emmanuel Church, Martyr's Church, Syriac Evangelical Church, built in 1923, 21, 40, and 65? Are we going to see widows and orphans rebuild the Armenian and even the Arab nation like back in those days? Seeing how area after area of our beautiful city is being destroyed, I cannot stop believing that it's going to be rebuilt one day. A friend of mine said the other day, I still haven't seen any practical use of being negative or pessimistic. I believe that there is a morning ahead of us. Yes, as Armenians, we have seen terrible days in the past and we are seeing them today, but we have never given up. That's why we look at the destruction of our churches and our schools, and then we contact the repairmen and say, we are not willing to stop building, whether it's buildings or humans. We believe in the eternal value of people's souls, and this world and all it brings us will not defeat us. Yes, Jesus has overcome the world, and so will we. Thank you for your attention.